somebody who's taken life experience <clears throat> and take it, made it into a positive to help with songwriting. Yeah. You know, from, and it all started from an early age from you. When did you start so actually songwriting? playing? Well, we started playing piano at five okay. and drums around 13, 14, and then picked up guitar around that time as well. And then okay. stuck with guitar. So yeah. were, you, were you listening <clears throat> to music? Like were you a fan of music at five or were you just like making music? Yeah, my first, the first music I was exposed to was Christian, like, gospel music, because yeah. my, my dad was a gospel singer, or is a gospel singer. So, early on, it was just, music was always in the house. We'd listen to a lot of, you know, the, the, these obscure Christian bands, and then there were, like, gospel, like, tunes, and then there was Elvis and the Beatles, and, you know, my mom had her, like, she loved Fleetwood Mac and a few others. So, I had this, like, yeah, I had a lot, we had a lot of music growing up, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so what was the first music that was <coughs> your own that wasn't from your parents? First music that was my own? That you were listening to. Oh man. Um, Green Day. Dookie album. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was that and Nirvana. Those, okay. those, those two records, like, yeah, Nevermind and, and Dookie. Yeah. Did that feel rebellious to your parents? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was not allowed to listen to those. <laughs> I had to sneak them in. I had to like sneak in Super Nintendos and then 64s into the house and like go downstairs and play because we weren't allowed to play video games. Or we, we weren't, we were allowed to, but they, they were really strict on like how much we were allowed to play. So yeah, I was, so, I was so, sneaky. So as a, as a young kid, you were dabbling with, with playing, playing instruments. And at what point did you decide you were going to try writing your own songs? Uh, I start. I wrote some songs when I was in junior high that no one will ever hear. Can you remember them? Yeah. One of them I remember. Uh, yeah, I, there's one song that I do remember. I'll never forget it, <laughs> but I'll never sing it. I'm not going to get you to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I started really writing songs uh, for me and, you know, in the, in the anticipation of releasing them. I'd say I started when I was 23. Okay. So in my third year of university, I started. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And can you remember the first song that you played that other people heard? Yes. From that era? Well, uh, in your life. Oh yeah, I played. Uh, this, actually, the fir one of the first moment things I. Uh, there's a few. There's been a few moments where I've because I moved around a lot. But when I was in in ninth grade, I I played. Uh, I sang Freebird, which is <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, because you know people yell Freebird at shows sometimes. It's just like, oh, isn't the rule yeah. if somebody yells I could play Freebird, it too? Yeah, isn't the rule <laughs> if somebody yells Freebird that you are actually supposed you to play it? You have to play it. You have to play it. I did. I started playing it. I, you can't I play it. the whole thing. It's a long song. You could play the whole thing. Though, <laughs> you could and just and and just stare at the person. <laughs> you asked for this, and then everybody else they asked for. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, I I. Uh, that was really nerve-wracking though because my parents showed up and I was so nervous and I didn't want them to see me singing I was so like insecure and then uh, in my high school graduation I wrote a song for my uh, for my graduation oh. and sang it and I was so I, I've never I've never been that nervous in my life wow so I, I yeah that's the child wife I am yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy you mentioned that you came from like you had a very Christian upbringing mm -hmm. And then a lot of people will know about the cult experience that yeah. you had, which that could be a whole other conversation whole other, for sure. Yeah. But obviously people who know about that situation would think, you know, people come out of that in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. And you seem to have come out of it very, with a very positive outlook f from it and kind of taken the best from it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's, what's the best that came out of that situation? I'd say the best thing that came out of it was just uh, a, a greater trust in my intuition. Okay. Being able to say, all right, I appreciated the 
what I learned or what I experienced in that one week that I was really in, invested in it. It was it's called intro week. And it was great. Uh, I feel like I learned a bit about myself, a bit about people. And, and they teach you little tools to like manage stress and manage like emotions, what, you know. But um, I think ultimately it was, it was into the intuition. Like I feel like I have a strong intuition for, for uh, when things might not be right. And it's because I feel like it's because I grew up in a church and I saw so much bullshit and so much like, not to say it's all bullshit because there are yeah. great people out there, you know, doing great things. But there was, there also are people that are kind of snakes and people that take advantage of other people. And that's, you know, I feel like me prying and asking a few questions and not getting much of a response was enough for me to be like, oh, there's something else going on here. Or there might be something else going on here. Right? Yeah. And they, maybe they don't even know about it. So, do you, do you find it harder to trust people now, or? Uh, on some level, yeah. I, I never feel like I'm holding back. Like I feel like I'm a very welcoming and like I'll I'll give anyone the time of day. I I will always try to do that. But um, but I feel like. Yeah, there, I think so. And, be, and going through a divorce, too, mm -hmm. affected my ability to trust people. So there's that. There's and then the experience with Nexium, and then yeah, yeah. But you put a lot of that into your songs, mm -hmm. so that's a positive outcome. Yeah, and, definitely. And is it sometimes weird singing those songs every <laughs> night? Like they're, they're going to take you back into that space? Yeah, <clears throat> you, I sort of have to like go back mentally into those into those times which is hard it gets harder as you, as time goes on cuz you're right. I'm so I feel so far removed from the divorce and from the you know the cult experience which was never truly traumatic for me but it was for friends of mine you know people that I that I loved so yeah um, yeah it's, it is hard it is hard to access sometimes there are some songs that I'm like should I I guess I I have to keep playing them cuz because I know that other people might be going through something I went through 10 years ago. So yeah. if I can connect with them in this way, then then I got to keep playing it. Yeah. yeah. And do, do people come up with you, to you with stories about similar experiences? Yeah. Oh, tons. All the time. Tons. I actually just met somebody whose sister-in-law was had this, has had a similar experience with cults. since I got here at the show. Yeah. I wrote, yeah. Someone wrote me yesterday and they said, uh, hey, I think they're from like Colorado, but they said, hey, I, I, I've I spent years in a cult and listening to your song has been an incredible, like, you know, just it's been an incredible, like, ease and peace. It's like my peaceful place. I'll just go into a corner and listen to your song. And I'm like, holy, holy shit, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know I could have, the music would have that kind of impact. So it's very, uh, very cool that, it, that it's reaching people all around the world. And Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's people looking for connection and maybe that's why they got into that situation in the yeah. first place. And now that hopefully they're out of it and now yeah. they find that connection with your music, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a cult leader, luckily, no. <laughs> so they can connect. Yeah. <clears throat> Very easy to go hold of and, uh, and I don't have a subscription plan, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, like, obviously you've done these different kinds of music. Yeah. I'm assuming that your music taste is pretty varied. Yeah. Yeah, quite varied. Uh, yeah, I go through phases of what I'm listening to. And right now I'm listening to a lot of, like, we're listening to old country again. Like Steve, oh, yeah. Steve Earle and, like, nice. classic songwriters like Towns Van Zandt. And, um, just digging into that a bit. Um, yeah. Back, back in the 90s, my ex-girlfriend found Steve Earle's number in a phone book, called, yeah. called him up and had a big conversation no. with him. Just like that. That's how that's things amazing. happened in the 90s. Yeah, that's how they did it, hey? <laughs> yeah. You just find him in the phone book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what about you, music? Do you, is, are you paying attention <laughs> to new music? Yeah. I try to. Um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I go to the new releases on Spotify and I just look for, al or, you know, artists that I might be familiar with or, you know, just like, oh, who's, you know, who's this? I should check them out. I don't know. Yeah. 
Can you hear anybody that's excited you recently? Hold on. You have to get your phone. Yeah, let me check. Let's see. What were we listening to yesterday? Because we've been driving. And yeah. I, I, I don't always... Um, yeah, what, what's, your, what's your soundtrack on the road? What have we been listening to? Oh, my friends, the Snotty Nose Res Kids just released an album, and it's oh, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, they're friends of mine, and that's a great from, from BC. Yeah, yeah, they're dope. Um, Virginia Vegas is a friend. Uh, he just released a single. I listened to that. It's awesome. Simmel, another. He's, uh, we share a label. Um, yeah. You just listen to your friends. <laughs> I, I do. I like supporting friends. That's good. Yeah, I'm. I'm just into that. Um, oh. Smashing Pumpkins have a new album? No. Oh. Is it is it a new album? It's kind of like... The, is it good? The, the first the trilogy is like a rock opera. Oh, nice. Like, I haven't... As or a, not nice, As I don't a know. massive Smashing Pumpkins fan, yeah. I haven't listened to it yet because I'm a bit worried that I'm going to hate it. Oh, no. <laughs> but... I yeah, know, if, it's, if, they're, if it is advertised as a rock opera and you don't like rock operas, that might be... Yeah. I think I need to be in the right frame of mind. I think for so. For a rock opera by Smashing Pumpkins. What is that frame of mind? Like, what do you have to? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. maybe like a good road trip. Oh yeah. Okay. Could be. Yeah. We'll see. Nice. So my last question. Yeah. Well, two last questions. What do you think <laughs> is the album you listen to the most in your life? What's the one album I've listened to the most in my life? Wow. Um, it'd either be Grace by Jeff Buckley or Graceland. By oh, a lot of grace. A lot of grace. <laughs> Both classics. They're great. Yeah, one of my big really regrets great. was I used to work in a club, yeah. and um, one night I was I was there just like hanging out, and the girl said, "Oh, you should check out this guy who's playing tonight. I think you'd like him." But I didn't know the name, so I just went home. It was Jeff Buckley. Oh no! I never got to see him. Where was this? In the UK. We're in in London in or Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Big regret. <laughs> I loved. I just love Jeff Buckley, and I, my, uh, I found out my art. One of my art teachers in college was a good friend of him. Oh, no. So I, we, I had a lot of conversations with her about him. She just told me stories. Yeah, He's nice. An eclectic guy. Yeah. And thank you very much for your time today. Of course. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. There's always time to go.